Good morning. I am Judy Mullins coming to you from Tennessee. I have some uh, groups on Facebook. I'm a decorative artist by trade, uh, working in it for more than 35 years in decoupage and decorative painting. I have a group called uh, Creating with Judy, and I have one vintage to chic, and hope you'll come visit us. But today I'm going to do a little something different. I'm in my kitchen, and I'm a candy maker. I have been for uh, years, I had a shop in the early 70s. I opened a gift and craft shop in West Virginia, and candy making was my number one resource. That we, did. we had that shop for many years, closing it in the early 90s, and then I got my love of decorative painting from that shop, but I've also was in the candy business and love making candies. <clears throat> but now, <clears throat> the only time I do them usually is around Christmas time. So I told the girls in my group that I'd show you how to do it, and I'm going to show you. Today I'm going to show you how to make chocolate-covered cherries, the world's best chocolate-covered cherries. I assure you, once you make your own and eat them, you will never buy another cherry in a box and eat it again. They're a little bit time-consuming, but it, they're, they're made with a dough, which is cream cheese and powdered sugar. I'm going to show you how to make the dough, show you how to make the cherries, show you what the chocolate is and so on. I'm gonna start with the cherries and then hopefully I'll get to show you some other recipes. Okay, I'm gonna turn my camera down so you can see now what I'm doing. I'm here in my kitchen on my bar. See if I can get it to where you can see me good. Okay, this is a dough board. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Turn it up just a tad here. And I've, I'm using powdered sugar, confectionery sugar, which I've got in a big container here. This right here is just confectionery sugar. And I've got Marchino cherries. I have taken these cherries and put them out on a paper towel on a, just put you a paper towel on a cookie sheet, something, take your cherries, pull the stems off of them, drain them, and don't squeeze them, and just pour them out on a paper towel. I usually do them and set them in my oven. You take all your cherries, put them on a cookie sheet, have three or four layers of paper towel under them so they'll soak up most of the juice, but don't squeeze them. I did these yesterday, then I just put them in a container last night to, to keep them until we work this morning. And then you're ready to work with them. You can't work with them right out of the jar because they're too juicy. Okay, now I've got cream cheese. You can use any kind of cream cheese. This one is from Walmart, which is okay. And I think you get two of these here in Tennessee. <coughs> we get two of these for a dollar. So that's a very good price. Let your, uh, your cheese come to room temperature, which I did that last night. And I've just put it in a bowl. Okay. This mixture makes so many different kinds of candy and it is so good. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of powdered sugar to that cream cheese. To an 8 ounce cream cheese, you're probably going to use maybe close to 2 pounds of sugar. But it's kind of like making pie dough. You just make it to uh, the consistency and add your sugar a little bit at a time. Now, I'm taking a fork and I'm going to work that sugar just like you would if you were working shortening into pie dough. I'm going to work that sugar and that... Uh, cream cheese together with my fork. I have a dough board under me. You can do it on your kitchen counter. It doesn't really matter just so you have a hard work surface. When I get enough powdered sugar into this, uh, this dough and stuff mixed to where I can work it by hand, I will just pour it out on my uh, board or my counter and finish working with it. Now I'm going to put a little bit more. That's about three cups I've already put in there. And that's not quite a full pack of powder of uh, cream cheese. I had used a little bit of it last night. This mixture will make you so many different kinds of candy. I'll post the recipe for the mixture in the comments when I when I post the video. Okay, I think I've got it to where I can dump it out there. So what I'm going to do, just take some powdered sugar, dump it on my board. I've got a couple of cups there. 
then I'm going to put this right into that mound of powdered sugar. Now you'll see as we work this that it'll work every bit of that sugar probably will work right into that dough. This tastes good just by itself. When you sample it, you'll figure that out. Now I'm just going to take my hands, start working that, just like I was making biscuits or pie dough or whatever. Okay. Push and squeeze till you get that dough. You'll see that sugar working right up into that dough. You want to work it up to where you can handle it till it's not sticky where you can handle it with your hands and be able to roll it in your fingers. It's a pretty day here in Tennessee. We're in East Tennessee and West Tennessee got really hit yesterday with the tornadoes, so be sure you say a prayer for those people really bad over there. Okay, now see, you can see how it's forming a dough as I come up and work with it. When we talk candy classes or making candy, I make chocolate covered cherries, we make Reese cups, we make Mala cups, we make smoothies, coconut bonbons, maple nut, cherry nut, uh, turtles, so many different kinds of candy. Chocolate covered cherries. <laughs> lots of different ones you can make, and lots you can make with this dough. Besides just the cherries, you could make uh, maple nut, cherry nut, orange creams, any kind of creams, cream-filled candies. You can make these yourself. And like I said, once you taste the homemade ones, you won't go back to the box stuff. The chocolate that I use for these, though, doesn't keep well in the summertime. So usually you make candy from, like, October till... Uh, Easter time and then your chocolate you need to use it up you can eat it it don't change the taste of it but it won't melt down for you after the humidity changes in the weather you can't get it to melt and it's melted in the microwave because you'll see now I've worked almost that whole two cups of sugar into that dough and it's now just like about what you would make pie dough with and it's almost to the point of using it would take a little bit more but I've already got some made in sort of for time so I'm just going to lay that one aside and show you the one I made last night okay this is the one I made last night I've been working with this morning I just put it in a plastic bowl this is a sour cream bowl and put a lid on it left it set out last night don't put it in the refrigerator just leave it set out now I'm going to show you how to roll your cherries this is a little <clears throat> time consuming and a little catchy to learn, but you'll get it down. Pinch you off a little piece, just a little ball, roll it in your hands, using powdered sugar to keep it from sticking to your fingers. See, this piece has got enough sugar in it until it don't stick to my hands, okay? Then I'm gonna roll, then I'm gonna take my fingers, press it <clears throat> into a little circle, press it out kind of thin, using the sugar to keep it from being real sticky. You don't want it to be sticky. Right, now, I'm going to pick up my cherries. Pick up a cherry here. Don't squeeze your cherries. Lay it in that dough. Take your fingers and gently pull that dough up around that cherry. Again, use your finger. You want to cover the whole cherry, but be careful not to squeeze it. And it'll take you a while of practice to learn to get it thin on there. Okay? Now, see how I've got that? Now, I'm going to lay that over here on my wax paper to dry. I've got ones over here that I've already done. And they, after they set a while, they kind of crust over. And that's when you're ready to dip them in chocolate. So, I'm going to make a few so that you still know how. Showing you how to do it. Then, I'm going to show you how to dip them in the chocolate. Okay. I could, a jar, I buy big jars of cherries at Sam's, and a jar usually has 100, about 100 or a little over 100 cherries in one of those jars. 
I can roll that hundred cherries in about an hour. <laughs> but doing your first time, it's going to take you a while to roll a hundred cherries. But the good thing about these, you make them now, they're going to be good for months and months to come. What you want to do when you buy your powdered sugar, I mean your cream cheese, be sure the date on your cream cheese is out there a few months. Right now you can buy cream cheese that is dated for like February, March. So if it's dated out that long, there's nothing else in that cherry that's going to ruin on you. So you can keep your cherries. They won't last that long, but you could keep them that long if you wanted to. Do not refrigerate. After you get them made, we're going to put them in a candy can, hide them from family. <clears throat> takes about seven days for this center to liquefy. You'll be amazed at what happens to the center of this cherry after you've let it set a while. Refrigeration would stop your process, so be sure you don't put them in the refrigerator. <clears throat> I use the candy cans or the little plastic. Uh, I have a bunch of these plastic tubs from the dollar Dollar Tree with lids on them. Just put them in one of them and then hide them somewhere in your house so that your family don't get in them. And then you'll you'll be amazed <clears throat> what they do. I don't know what it is. Can't tell you. When I first started the candy business in the late seventies. The lady who sold my candy supplies to me from Huntington, West Virginia, she gave me the recipes that I use. I don't know where she got them or who come up with it. I've never seen it anywhere else. So really, you should start making your candies before Thanksgiving or by Thanksgiving. Get them made, get them stored away in your cans and stuff and leave them. Then around Christmas, when you want to give them for gifts, I buy some pretty boxes or the uh, Chinese takeout things make really good. That holds about a pound of candy. You can decorate it with ribbon and a pretty ornament and you got a nice little gift for co-workers or church friends or whoever you're looking for a gift for. And you can mix your candies in there. You can make peppermint patties, make all kinds of stuff. Okay. See, I'm still one, two, three, four, five, six. I've rolled six in that couple of minutes there. Okay. Like I said, I'll put the recipes for all the things that you can do with this one mixture. I'll put them in the comments when I post the video. I'll add the recipes to this. Okay, that's what I'm going to roll for now. Now I'm going to tell you, if you want to make something else with this dough, these little flavorings here are called Loran flavorings. You can buy them almost anywhere. I'd say Walmart has them in the cake decorating section or even pharmacies carry these. You'll see them in all flavorings. They're all flavorings. The peppermint, if you wanted to make peppermint patties for this, you would take some of your dough, spread it out. Now peppermint's real strong, so when you make it, don't kind of make it a taste your dough and kind of make it a little weaker than what you want it to be when you eat the candy because the peppermint will season in to your dough and be a little stronger. And when you're making peppermint candies, don't mix them in with another box of other candies because the peppermint will bleed over into your other candies. But you take this dough like this. I'm not going to do this because I'm not going to make none today. Then open your peppermint flavoring and pour two or three drops whatever into your dough and then work it work your dough until you got that flavoring put down through your dough then you would take out a little ball about what you want the size of a uh, the bite sized peppermint patties to be roll it in your hand softly and then right in the palm of your hand push your hands down like this and see you get a patty that is kind of even all the way around you don't want it to be real thin and then you will dip those in chocolate, but you would dip them to get a real peppermint patty, you would dip them in dark chocolate. So that would make your peppermint patties. Now, if you wanted to make orange creams or lemon creams, take the same dough, get your flavorings in that flavor, put the orange flavoring in here, put you a little bit of orange food 
dye in here, cake dye, and then roll it up and put your things in. Same way you can make maple nut. I would take, uh, <clears throat> hard to talk, I'm getting out of breath. I would take um, uh, crushed walnuts, English walnuts, put English walnuts in this dough and maple flavoring. Maple flavoring in with the dough and that will make you maple nut. You could do that with uh, pecans. You could make anything you want out of this dough. I mean, there are lots of different flavors, most any candies. You can flavor this dough with all those different candies. Now, when I'm making, besides the peppermint patties, if I'm making three or four more different kinds with the same dough, when I form them so that when I put them in my candy boxes, I will know what they are or what they can tell the person. So when I make maple nut, I might form them in a square. Press that in, press this down, press it, and make you a square out of that piece of, uh, out of your candy mixture. Then when you dip it, see, you make a square. When you dip it, you will know that your squares are maple nut. Or, <clears throat> if you've put almonds in it or something else, whatever you want <clears throat> to put in it, make your shapes different. Maybe do one in an oval, do one like this, put it in an oval shape, and that could be your lemon candies or your strawberry flavors. You can make them any flavor that you want and any shape that you want, but the shapes will allow you to, uh, to differentiate in what kind of candies you have. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about the chocolate. Okay. This chocolate comes in all different colors. Let me clean up my board a little bit here because I'm going to dip candy, so I'm going to pick this up. Let me get me a scraper. Okay, I'm going to pick this up, put it in a bowl so I can show you how to dip them now. Okay. Okay. Now, candy, this is red. It comes in all different colors. I sold it for years, <clears throat> and when I closed my shop in the early 90s, my sister has a store in West Virginia now in Hanover, which is called a little country store called Godfrey's Corner. She took over the candy selling business, and now she sells it in her store. Here in Tennessee, I live in the Knoxville. I live right out of Sevierville, and in this area, you can't find this kind, this brand of candy. So I order from her, she sends it to me, or I buy the, bought this bag. This is a 10 pound bag of milk chocolate. The brand is, what it is, my glasses. Okay, I'm gonna spell it for you because it sounds different. It's Americans, M-E-R-C-K-E-N-S, candy coating melting wafers. This is the chocolate light. Daryl, let the dog out. This is the chocolate light. It comes in light, dark, and all different colors. But now your colors are not flavored. Like this green is still the same flavor as the white would be, the white. I'll show you how to make coconut bonbons later. And this is the colors that I would use. All of these cover colors have about the same vanilla flavoring. And you have to be real careful when you're, when you're um, melting it because any water, anything, don't get anything in it whatsoever because it'll mess up your chocolate and get real thick. This is one I melted last night. See if I can get my dip spoon out of here. Well, I'm going to have to melt that, I think, to get my spoon out. Uh-oh, okay. This is called a dip spoon. Handiest tool you'll have for making candies. So get you one at Walmart or it, I think Wilton has them. So Walmart has them, Hobby Lobby has them, most all the stores that sell candy supplies. Now we do have one Amish store here called Yoder's is up I-40, up on 81. And they stock the chocolate, but it, that's about a 40 mile drive for me. So I'm going to use milk chocolate. And this is just a pound bag. And I'm gonna show you how to melt it. If you get it too hot, you're going to ruin it. 
So be very, very careful when you're melting it. I'm gonna put that in the microwave and I'm gonna use high on my microwave. Your microwave might be a little bit different. I'm gonna use the high on my microwave and put it in for one minute, starting one minute right now. Put this up a little bit. See if I can get it to stay up there. Well, it's gonna fall on me. Okay, I'm going over here. Put this in my microwave for a minute. I start with a minute, and then after that, I do about 30 seconds at a time until I get it to where I want it. My little thing on my, it's not holding my video up, so I'm gonna have to go around here and tighten it up a little bit. when I walk over to the microwave. You can see I have my pajamas on. Okay, after a minute, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to show you how it's starting to melt. But it's not melted yet. So take it out, stir it. If you leave it in there and don't stir it, you might get the center of it too hot and burn it and then your chocolate will just get real grainy and you, there's nothing you can do with it to throw it out. So I'm gonna go back, put it in there. And this time I'm gonna go about 30, 40 seconds. It looks like, see, it looks like it's not, not melting, but melting. But when you stir it, see how it's now coming down to melt. See, and after after the winter goes, and that candy won't melt like that. But you want that to melt. Just keep stirring it to get all those little lumps and stuff out of it, and keep stirring it until it's just. See how it is now. And I'm using that dip spoon. Okay, now let me get you back over here, down a little bit. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to use wax paper. You're going to lay these out. Lay your dipped candies onto wax paper. So I've got a wax paper little piece here. I've got a wax paper piece over here on the other side of my table where I've put a whole bunch of them. But these I'm just going to show you. And I'm going to take the ones that I made earlier this morning. These have kind of crusted over. As they've set a little bit, they've kind of crusted over. So I'm gonna put it on my spoon, put it lightly in the top of that. Don't just drop them down into the bottom of that chocolate because you'll have a hard time getting them out. Then I'm going to pick that up on my spoon lightly, flip my spoon over and drop it on my paper. Put a little bit of wax paper on this little tray so you can see what they look like. I can pick them up and show you what they look like. It's a messy job, but it's fun to do. It's fun with the kids. We make peanut butter balls or whatever the kids always help. So I'm picking those up. Put them in the chocolate, roll them around a little bit, pick it up, flip it over, drop it on my paper.
If you haven't visited my group, come over to my page, Vintage to Chic. I have a couple of Etsy shops. I've been in business, wholesale, retail, teaching and all for way over 35 years. I've just got into teaching some on Facebook, so I'm still in the learning process of doing that. Met a lot of nice people on Facebook. It's funny how you get acquainted. You call them Facebook friends, but they do really get to be friends. After so long of chit-chatting on Facebook, you feel like you get to know people. And sometimes you're lucky enough to actually meet them, so that's good. Okay. So I'm still... Now this candy, you can buy candy in the grocery store. You can buy candy at Walmart, dipping chocolates at Walmart, but this one won't melt in your hands. When you pick it up to eat, eat it, it won't melt on your fingers. The others, this one has a super good taste and it won't melt. When you pick it up to eat that piece of candy, it won't melt in your hands like a lot of those do. Some of those things you find at Hobby Lobby and things, I've used those if I get in a pinch and need a color and I can't get the chocolate, I'll go to Hobby Lobby or somewhere and buy me a pound. But like I said, you'll see the difference if you use the two. Amazon has this chocolate at a really good price. The colors on Amazon are expensive. But now it's usually four or five dollars a pound anywhere you get it. Okay, so I've now dipped all of those that, that I had made last night and those I just made to show you I'm gonna wait on. But if you look at these, See this one? These have already started to harden. Just takes it less than 10 minutes for that to harden up on your, on your plate. Then the bottom of your cherries, I don't know why it is, but the bottom of them always have a hole in the bottom when you dip them. So you gotta go back and dip the bottom of that cherry one more time after they dry. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna show you, let's see, somewhere around here, Okay, I'll show you this while we're waiting on that. These are peanut butter balls, okay? And they're made, except the use of using peanut butter and sugar and butter, they're rolled and made the same way as the cherries, except they don't have the cherries inside of them. So I'm gonna open this one and show you, see what it looks like inside. It's peanut butter inside. These are real good. So when you make these, these I made yesterday, when you make these, to about, take a stick of butter, stick of margarine, melt it in a bowl, and then add about two cups of uh, peanut butter, creamy peanut butter. I like the Jif peanut butter. You can choose your brand. Or you can add crunchy peanut butter if that's what you like. But put about two cups of peanut butter and use the same method I showed you. Stir the butter and the peanut butter together and then add your sugar a little bit at a time with a fork in your bowl until you can work it by hand. Then pour it out on your board or your counter and add your powdered sugar and keep adding that until you get it to form a dough shape that you can roll into balls. Then you just roll that into balls, set them out on your wax paper. When you get them all rolled, then you go back, melt your chocolate the same way and dip them into chocolate. Now. Some places you can buy butterscotch chocolate. If you buy, dip them in butterscotch, they'll taste like smoothies. If you're not familiar with a smoothie, if you're as old as I am, you know what smoothies and malacups and stuff are. But if you're not, then you may not know what that is. But that's really good. But the butterscotch chocolate has gotten real hard to find. Now, these first cherries that I dipped are almost hard enough for me to pick up. See, I can pick this one up. And you'll see how it's got a spot on the bottom. If you don't dip that spot, when they liquefy, your, your center will run out of that cherry. So just pick it up and right into your bowl, dip that again, and lay it right back down on the same spot to harden again. And you can set them down exactly the way they were. For some reason, I don't know why it does that, but for some reason, it'll seal that hole and it won't be, it uh, won't, your centers won't run out. Okay, I think that covers the chocolate covered cherries. So I hope you enjoy. And like I said, I'll post the recipes and then I'll try to make another video in, in the next day or so when, when I'm uh, 
doing candies again, I'll show you how to make coconut bonbons, which are just coconut, uh, but you have to have dry, dry coconut, some regular coconut, and Cairo, Cairo syrup or white syrup is all it is in, in um, coconut bonbons. And then they're dipped in the colors, and you can make uh, almond joys, mounds bars, coconut bonbons. You can make lots of different kinds with that kind with that uh, recipe too. Okay, and then maybe I'll get around to showing you how to make malacups and a few of the other turtles. I make turtles, I make dipped pretzels, caramel, caramel and pecan dipped pretzels, make the pretzel sticks or round pretzels. But I've enjoyed showing you this and I hope it's, I hope it helps you. And you all have a good day. God bless.